So, quest topics? Yeah. All right, so uh, this was a topic that we didn't really talk about in news because I saved it for the request area. Mm -hmm. So uh, Nintendo gave us a mini NES. They're making a mini NES that's going to be 60 bucks, preloaded with 30 games, come with a controller that's exactly like the original NES controller, and has HDMI ports, so, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, uh, both Justin and Dave wanted us to talk about this. I think it is a brilliant idea. I kind of feel like Nintendo jumped on this a little late, because there were a lot of other companies doing this before they did. Now, if they do it, if they execute this better than the other guys did, then you got some water going. I kind of feel like they will, though. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a solid machine. I had, you know, I won't be able to tell if it feels cheap until I actually have one in my hands. Because it can look solid, and then you pick it up and it weighs a feather. And then you're like, well, what's in there, magic? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure what Nintendo did here was smarter because they kept it in-house. Sega and Atari, they all licensed their property out yes. to these other companies, like App Games, and then there's a few other ones, too. Um... That, Sega uh, loves At Games. That I think Sega, I think At Games might be connected with Majesco. Uh, yes. who used to be a I've game not company. heard of Majesco in uh, so long. Who, but who was a former game company that actually released several uh, uh, print runs of uh, the Sega Game Gear, and uh, Sega Genesis Three was a Majesco property as well. Um, but. A lot of the time, like I, I have one of the first Atari flashbacks um, when they brought those out, where they had the Atari games built in. They were it was when the plug and play craze was going on, where it's a controller you plug into your TV and you just play using batteries. Yeah. Then they're like, oh, we'll make these little systems that are based off of the older systems, and they just have all the games programmed into them. So I picked up the Atari flashback uh, two, I think, for uh, I'd like probably paid like twenty bucks for it, and it feels like an empty piece of plastic. It just feels so light and doesn't feel like it has any weight to it. And the controllers kind of suck. Yeah. And then, like, th over the next couple years, they started making more of these. There's up to, like, five Atari flashbacks now. There's a Coleco flashback and a television flashback. And then there was the, the Sega Genesis ones where you can go to Walgreens and buy, where it's got, like, 80 games programmed in. And it has a cartridge slot, and it has wireless controllers, which suck, uh, from what I hear, um, <clears throat> because they're infrared and they're awful. One of the things that I think Nintendo really did smart with this was the controllers they're making for it are based off the original NES yeah. controllers, but the port, the cord, will fit into a Wiimote, so you can use it to play virtual console games with the original NES controller. Oh, Nintendo is the king at devising peripherals that will yeah. work with everything. I so, mean, yeah. GameCube on the Wii U? I don't, think a lot of, I don't think a lot of people noticed that at first when they showed the actual little system. The ports, it's the same plug as when you're plugging like a nunchuck or or what other peripheral you might have into the uh, Wiimote. Yeah. So that's, that's smart right there. Um, another thing is the HDMI. Because other than like a Retron 5, there's no way to play uh, NES games through HDMI uh, unless you're like a really crazy modder. And at that point, there's really no NES left. You <laughs> had to gut it to turn it into whatever this is. Or, you know, you get one of those frame meisters, you spend 300 bucks on that for it to upscale your TV. So here's an opportunity for you to play your NES games on an HDMI through your modern TV and have it look good. Without and having to, and to having and to really fight with the picture size or whatever to make it work, um, the only thing for me is the only way to make this successful is if they if it add more games onto this down the road. Oh, of course, whether there's you, no way they you want. have connectability where you can put more In games DLC on it. Pitch? They're gonna have to do it that yeah. way. There's no way there's not. <clears throat> but the lineup, it's not all just Nintendo properties. It's pretty good though. <laughs> This makes me laugh because I feel like the uh, value of these games are going to drop now. Yes and no. If they didn't drop because of Virtual Console, or, or drastically drop because of Virtual Console, I don't think they're going to drop by this. But like Mega Man 2's on this, mm -hmm. Super C's on this, Castlevania 2's on this, I think. And one. They picked that one. Yeah. One, uh, one is on. One's on there too. Yeah. Um, all the Super Mario games, the all, staples. All the Nintendo licensed, the Donkey Kong. Dr. Uh, Mario, Legend of Zelda, Dr. Mario, Dr. Mario, Legend of Zelda, Duck Hunt and Super Mario Brothers. Zelda 2. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah, there's just there's, there's so many on and there. And then Star Tropics is on there. Yeah, that's a Nintendo property. Oh, is it? Okay. That nobody's talked about in years. Um, so you're getting 30 games on this system where, like, I was talking to Matt earlier. He's like, well, you know, I already have the cartridges or I can just get them on my Wii. And I'm like, yes, but if you're going and downloading them all through Virtual Console, 30 games is probably going to be like 150 bucks at least buying them download. It depends on whether or not they're on sale or not. Right, right. So it I think it's a, a, a really good deal. Bucks. I just wish they had found a way to do a cartridge slot. Yeah. I feel like if they would have integrated it for both physical and digital media, that would have been it insane. Been the tits. Even if even that if would have been insane. Even if it would have bumped it up a little bit more in price. Yeah, if you would have if you would have made it like ninety bucks mm -hmm. to have, which it shouldn't be, because like a seventy-two pin is like fucking fifteen dollars. If and they like, <clears throat> but then that that might make people think, oh, they're gonna start uh, reselling cartridge games. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, but I don't know. I just think if they had added a cartridge slot, they would packaged it with two controllers and sold it at a hundred bucks. I would buy it. Right, because then they would be taking a stab at actually starting to take down the uh, hyper hyperkin hyperkin market. Because that's where they're winning right now. They're like, well, here's an HD console that plays all those and Super Nintendo. Da -da 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 -da. So it's like Nintendo could at least kind of got in that ring a little bit yeah. if they put some physical yeah. uses in it. See, but they might start doing something like that with the, uh, they decided to do this anyway. With Super Nintendo. Oh, God. Because everybody was, loves the Super no, Nintendo. Oh, man. Yeah. What if this is just a uh, precursor to what the NX might be? I don't know. There's some people speculating that this is the NX. Like, they, all the, all the, like, the patent that they applied for and stuff like that was really based off of what we're seeing now. Uh, a system that isn't uh, like optical disc based system. It's, mm -hmm. it's all internal memory. Um, you know, some of the, the, the patents that they were applying for, the name itself kind of plays off of when a company several years ago called Messiah Entertainment came up with a system called the Generation Nex. Oh, which God, I looked remember that. exactly like a thin uh, NES, it was like a top loading system, mm -hmm. um, when that was when the, the Nintendo like, system component license had lapsed its copyright and anybody could start making Famiclones. Um, but, I love that word. <laughs> but, you know, for me, somebody who has over 250 NES games, this is still interesting to me because of the price point. Um, I mean, 60 bucks is just basically a brand new game. It's a new game. And you get 30 NES games that I can play on my TV with an original feeling controller. Now, they yeah. have to make sure the controllers feel original. The, the weight and everything, man, because that yeah. weight's important. Yeah, it really is. People seem to not understand that when it comes to a controller. Sometimes you'll get one, it's like, yeah, that looks just like an Xbox controller. And you pick it up, it's like, this is really fucking light. And NES third-party controllers, like for the original NES, they suck. They are horrible. They feel they feel too light. The buttons feel crappy. Uh, they're not responsive. They they need to nail that. And I, I mean, God, they have the access to the, you know, the originals and the, the original yeah. design and everything. They should be able to make it work. Yeah, definitely. But like you said, if they come out with a Super, Super Nintendo, Nintendo version of this, oh man, and, it, and if they made the the controllers wireless, ooh man, it would fly off the shelves. Yeah. I guarantee it. I mean, like, it was Super Mario World. What if the NX is basically this, but like cross-platform? It's like Nintendo, Super, 64, like all their stuff that was cartridge-based. Because there was that rumor, too, mm -hmm. that they were talking about the new console being cartridge as Using well. Using like an SD card. I'd system. tell you right now, if they released the system that allowed you to play all those, and it was like a first party Nintendo thing, I I probably would fucking buy it up right, right away. Yeah. Super Nintendo N64 and regular Nintendo? Fuck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because be nobody's awesome. been able to nail down, they say they did, but nobody's really been able to nail down the N64 uh, for emulation. No. Because it's, it's all it's all buggy. Yeah. Like, you can get it to run about 95% capacity, but it's still not, like, perfect. Yeah. So... So I definitely think they will. Uh, I saw uh, Pat Contry uh, from the Completely Unnecessary podcast. He put a, up a Twitter uh, 
he tweeted about this, um, where he said that this is going to fly off the shelves come the holidays. I think Nintendo might have the last left this holidays, uh, just by pushing this out there at the price point they have it at. Yeah. I think it also might be tough to get it first, so if you want to get it, you might want to get in the pre-orders. Yeah, you might want to do that, definitely. Good old pre-orders. <laughs> I'm just saying, the, the history of Nintendo putting out stuff oh, at the very yeah, beginning in the, the right amount of quantities, I mean, we went through it with the Wii, we went through it with, uh, with Amiibo, so... Yeah, so I'm going to get one. Let us know if you're thinking about getting one, and if you are, maybe you can come on over to the Grindcast uh, area in the Grinded, uh, Grinded Gaming uh, Studio here, and maybe you can play some games with us on the show. If you'd like to do that, just let us know. So, for that, all of the places you can get us and contact us are down in the annotations below. Thank you all for watching and for listening. We'll catch you in the next episode.